Well, welcome back YouTubers. And today I got a tutorial that might seem the same, but I guarantee you that is different. This is a very simple shader that I've put together. There's just, just more material. And uh, I've watched a whole bunch of different um, videos on how to make glass in Eevee. Specifically Eevee, because that's all I use, because that's about all I have time to use in my day-to-day -day work schedule when it comes to making videos for social media at my day job. And the reason why is because I just don't have time to use the Cycles render engine. So I use exclusively Eevee. And my goal was to make a very good, very fast rendering, realistic looking architectural glass. Because I started working for a window company. And of course the glass has to look like real glass that you would use in your home. So this video I guarantee you, it's gonna be a little bit different and a little bit the same, but nobody has made glass like this in Eevee the way I have. Okay, so we're in Blender and this is the glass you saw during the intro. And if you notice, this is the way glass works. Uh, if you're in front of it, it is more transparent, but the more you get to the side, it will get less transparent and more reflective. So here it starts to become like a mirror right here. And then as you get more to the front, it becomes more transparent. But it's also important that it reflects not only your world, which this is a world shader I have set up right here. There's a whole bunch of videos on how to set up a, uh, a world shader or HDRI in your EV scene. We're not gonna go over that because that could be its own video in itself. But you wanna make sure you have a world for it to reflect off of and you need to have objects in your scene for it also to reflect off because that's what's really going to help sell that glass and make it look more realistic, right? So over here, we have a thin piece of glass and it's set up basically the same way. As you get to the side, it's more reflective and as you come in front of it, it's gonna be more transparent. So we're gonna make that right here, but we don't want this on the floor. So let's go ahead and let's get our work table activated. So go, go gadget work table. So you guys thought we were gonna work on the floor? Pfft, nah. We're gonna work on this crazy looking contraption. Now, the reason why I did this, let's go back to here. So we can see these a little better. The reason why I did this is because I wanted to show you that there is a difference between curved glass and flat glass. There is a definite difference. Now, most tutorials you'll see are gonna be on curved glass, which is fine. It works great for curved glass, but I haven't really found one that shows a good example uh, flat glass, so I had to learn how to do this myself. Gosh darn it. You have to learn to do things yourself. It just takes way longer. But I'm teaching you guys, you don't have to learn how to do it. I will just show you how incredibly complicated this material is right here, or this shader, whatever you want to call it. I use a whole bunch of different programs, so I get confused. So let's go over here to the shader. Look at, recenter it. Don't you crash? Okay, good. I got a screen capture software in the background. It's crashed like four times. There's a tutorial. It's the fourth time I've done it. I hope it won't crash this time. We can get through it. So let's show you exactly how complicated this guy is. Bear with me. I, I'm sure you guys can learn it with me. But, yep, there it is. So complicated, right? I'm not sure if we can, if I can teach this enough time. There it is. Tutorial over. No, I'm just kidding. But all we have is for now and a color ramp and a couple other things that we got to do to this. So let's go ahead and go over to this guy right here and I'll show you how it's done. It's actually, as you can see, very, very easy. Let me just go out of this so it's a little smoother like this. So we're just gonna go to new. You can see we have our principal shader, control A, F for fantastic, for nail. We go to our for nail, we're gonna make this 0.9. Control A, C for crayons, color ramp. Take the factor to there. We're gonna go down to the alpha right here. Color down to the alpha. Now, if we were to press control and shift, we can see what's going on here this for now. Black is gonna be completely transparent and all the way white is going to be completely non-transparent or reflective in our case, we are making glass. 
So let's go back to our principal control shift list so we can see the entire stack right here of all our very complicated shaders here. Holy moly. So we'll make this, let's make it something interesting like red glass. Yeah. Or pink. No, let's make it pink. Everyone likes pink. Wearing this week, right? For, I guess, uh, for breast cancer. All right. So first, we need to turn up the uh, metallic all the way up, specular all the way up, roughness all the way down, and we'll start to see some reflections. There we go. Let's turn this all the way down and that all the way down. If we click back to that, we can see it a little better. But you see, nothing's happening, and that is because we're going to go down here to our material properties, and there's a thousand ones that cover this. You need to go to Alpha Blend. I like Alpha Blend. You can do Alpha Hash. I like Alpha Blend. But I do, on the shadows, I do Alpha Hash because that does seem to work a little better. And you can see we're completely transparent here. You can't even see it. So let's go ahead and turn this up a little bit. So that way we can see some pink there. And now we're starting to get this effect to work. But we need to add another material to the sides because if your glass is going to sit out there and open and not in a frame, you will lose the effect of glass unless we add another material to the side. So hit tab. Let's just click this guy, that guy, that guy, that guy just in the sides. Go all the way up from right here. We're going to hit plus, new. This is named the sides. And this is named this in the front. Just so we know. Go back to the sides. Let's assign that to the sides. Sign. Hit tab. Exit out of there. Now we have two slots. Let's go to our sides, which are already on. We are going to get rid of this guy right here. I'm going to hit delete. Then we're going to go back to our front. We're just going to control C. Come back to our size so we don't have to make it again. Control V. Now we have duplicated that, but it's a copy. If you don't get control D, I'll see you really screwed things up. You'll change it here and it'll change over there. So control C. Now we need to go back down in here. Let's make sure it's set up. It's not. Let's go to alpha blend, shadow mode, alpha hashed, screen space refractions. Do I have screen space refractions on this one? Make sure we have it on both of them. Yes, we do. On the back face right here, make sure. Let's go right here. Oh, this is a little low. There we go. Make sure this is not selected for either one of them because you want to be able to see both sides. So there we go. We have something going on right there. And for the sides, they're going to be almost like a mirror. So we want to have very, very little transparency with these guys. This needs to be all the way up and this side needs to be almost oops, almost touching which it is. So as you can see, we can see through it still transparent but not much. So I'll show you how that effectively really broken. See if you turn it down it's broken up right around there. Looks pretty good. So now we're getting there but we are missing one more thing. So what we need now is just get our 3D cursor, slap that right there. And also you got to make sure that in your, uh, this little camera guy, render properties, that, let me make sure here, if you're at the very, very top from Eevee, ambient occlusion on, blooms on, right here, screen space reflections needs to also be selected, right? Or else that'll happen. This looks better. So, uh-oh. Okay, I thought I was gonna crash again. Good Lord, don't you dare crash on me. But if you notice, we are only using the background as a reflection at this point, right? Even if you have screen space refractions on. So that is a problem, right? So what we need, got a 3D cursor right here, hit Control A. We need to go down to a light probe, reflection plane. Hit R. 
and we are going to go that should be 90 yeah, negative 90 and see this guy's pointing this way and neat that's the only direction it is going to add your reflections so let's get this to size you can make this smaller oops and your object you notice it's only going to reflect inside this plane so you need to encompass your glass or whatever object you want to it to be reflecting as a mirror. This is the same thing you use as a mirror, but glass is pretty much just a see-through mirror. So it's, as you can see now, that drastically helps sell the effect of glass and EV. So if we're to take this guy, you can see that the more we get to the side, the more reflective it is, the more we get to the front, Still the same reflective, but it's more see-through. So if you want to adjust this, let's go to the front. If you were to click this guy, we can adjust how transparent it is versus the side, and that is based off of your for now right here. So that is pretty much it, and that is how you make glass and EV that looks realistic. Now, there's a couple of things I want to point out that you need to be aware of. Look at this guy over here. Now, if I were to select this, you'll see a stepping going on with your lights. Hit period to find that one. This is the one that moved it all. So let me move this guy in front right here. Now, you see that? We have some serious banding going on, but th that banding is intentional. Because I'll show you what will happen if you don't set up this way. Let's first go over this. As you can see, this is the very middle one. As you go out in the stack, we have the next layer, which are these bandings going on right here. So this size is dictated off of the size of your light. See right here, radius. And your specular. Can't see it? Now you see it. So what I'm doing, I'm trying to set up some sort of gradient going on. Now, if you really had the time, if you really want to set up a whole bunch of them, I guess you've set up like a hundred of them, you won't see this that, that much. But you have to set this up a certain way. So the very first one you'll notice, I have very low power because you need something for your specularity to work. So you turn it down, your specular doesn't work. And so you can adjust how bright it is based on that. See, I turned this up just enough to give me some specular. And I use this to adjust it on out. But I don't have any shadows on this. It is just for this effect right here. If we go up our stack, you can see as you get farther out, you have more of a gradient. And I'm turning these guys down and up to adjust this. You're going to have to put it next to a, see that? You're going to have to put it next to your, your glass to see how this is going to look. And it's not quite as intuitive as you would think. You kind of have to mess with it because it does affect all that specular in there. So does the brightness. So you really have to mess with that. So, but on all these guys from here to here, you don't want any shadows. You're just using it as a little bit of power and your specular. Now the very outside one, is has no specular this is where i'm doing the shadows and the contact shadows have that all the way down because if not if you turn the specular up on this oh my god that looks horrible right so let me show you how horrible it looks if you were just to have just one so let's move this guy over here and we'll bring our guinea pig from over to the side let's just move it here we go to, oh, i don't want to change views because it might crash whenever i have screen capture with nvidia it does dumb shit in the front no yeah, there we go so we can't see anything because i'm just using the power of the light to illuminate see now if i were to turn specular up oh my god that just looks like total garbage who wants that and you might say hey i'll just use a light without specular which you can you definitely can do that but without the specular, you lose another effect with the bloom right here. So if you have bloom on, 
if you're not a specular, you don't get your shiny shinies. I mean, you want your shiny shinies, right? Every now and then you got to have a little bling bling. So without the specular, you don't have the bling bling. So depending on what you're doing, be aware of that. If you want some bling bling, you got that specular. If you don't want bling bling, then you don't need specular. But one thing you might have to worry about, if this guy is outside, you have your light, and depending on the size of your lights, will have gross looking specular on there. Now, I know what you're thinking. I know what you're thinking. So let me go back to this. I'm going to turn up the specular, right? So we can see how gross that is. Let's go back on our object. And we are on the front material. Yeah, I can just turn up the roughness, and it'll make it blend out. But the problem is, without... When the roughness is up, you lose your effect of that glass because you cannot see any of the reflections in the scene. See that? So let me go ahead and just turn this gross specular down for right now. And we were to click on that. If I turn roughness out, you can see we just lost the entire effect of it being like glass. And there we go. Now we got glass. Now we got some weird shit that doesn't look like glass. So that's something else to be aware of. And I think that pretty much covers everything. There's ways around this. And that's how I do glass in Eevee. Thanks for watching, guys. Don't forget to subscribe. Until next time, I'll have another tutorial like this that's extremely useful to you guys. Look, bling bling. See, you got to have the bling bling on the glass, man. That's my guy's specular. Peace out, guys.